Hi everyone and welcome back to Comics and Chill and today we are talking about Mark Miller. Now in recent months uh, it seems like he's kind of everywhere. Uh, he's always been releasing books over the last few years. I kind of dipped out on him for a little while. But this last year with him snatching up some artists from Marvel and DC such as Jorge Jimenez and Pepe Larraz. Uh, he's also recently been doing more work with Frank Whiteley and with the uh, elusive Travis Charest on his series called The Ambassadors. It just seems like he's really making a big splash in the Western comics industry at the moment. And if you read his newsletter or listen to his podcast, he is legitimately uh, very excited about comics and you can tell he loves to make them. I know a lot of people have deemed him to be a sellout. Uh, I, th I think I went through that kind of phase a few years ago when I dropped off of reading his books for a while. But to be honest with you, the way things are in mainstream Western comics, he has become one of the things that is really getting me excited about, yeah, about reading comics. And if you've been reading his recent Nemesis Reloaded series and you got to the end of that issue, there's a spoiler that I'm gonna give here, but he has announced it in his newsletter. Uh, he has a series called Big Game coming out soon, drawn by Pepe Larraz. And it is a sequel to his very first creator-owned series, which is the comic book Wanted. He launched his Miller World company with Wanted back in, I think it was 2003, along with uh, two other titles. And I loved Wanted as a kid. And when I found out that Big Game is a sequel to that 20 years later, and not only is it a sequel to Wanted, but it's going to be a crossover featuring, I think every Miller World book there's ever been and it just got me incredibly excited so I decided I'm gonna go back and reread all of those early Miller World books and also catch up on some that I missed because there's been quite a few from about 2015 to 2019 that I skipped out on maybe they just didn't look like they were my cup of tea or I was in my mode of thinking that Miller was a bit of a sellout and I'm gonna give a brief overview of all of them here in the lead up to the release of Big Game, which I believe comes out on July 19th. But whilst I've got you here, I'd like to take a second to point you in the direction of my comic, Gifford the Clown, uh, which will definitely have some of Mark Miller's fingerprints on it. Uh, he was a big influence on me uh, wanting to be a comic creator when I was a kid. Gifford the Clown is a high octane action adventure comic written by myself with phenomenal artwork by Joe Bieman. I would definitely put him up there with Travis Charest, Otomo, Brian Hitch, and uh, he also reminds me a lot of Trevor Hessian. But he drew the hell out of this comic, and it is wall-to-wall -wall action. It is about a disposable clown mercenary who is sent on a mission to Kowloon, the walled city, to extract an informant. But when he and his partner land in the city, things go south quickly, and they have to fight their way out. There's a link in the description where you can buy the comic, both digital and physical editions. And I'll also include a link to the trailer for the comic, so please be sure to check that out. But now back to Miller World. So in the early 2000s, Miller was huge. He had come off of The Authority at Wildstorm, a run he did there with Frank Whiteley. He went to Marvel to do Ultimate X-Men and The Ultimates, uh, another series I loved. And apparently, uh, what I've heard in interviews, at some point, Stan Lee got in his ear and said, look, you need to start creating and owning your own stuff. And he did. He created three titles, which were going to be published with three different publishers, but they were all going to exist within the same universe, the Middle World universe. I don't know if he was calling it Middle World back then, but these first three titles, there was actually meant to be four titles, but the three that were released were Wanted, Chosen, and The Unfunnies. There was meant to be a fourth title called Run with Ashley Wood, but it never came to be. Wanted was published by Top Cow with art by J.G. Jones. Chosen, which was later renamed American Jesus, was published at Dark Horse with art by Peter Gross. And The Unfunnies <laughs> was published at Avatar. And this book, we'll get into it later, but it's pretty much been wiped off the Millerverse or Miller, Miller World Universe map for reasons I will get into soon. Okay, so first up we have Wanted, which was published in 2003 and came out from Mark Silvestri's Top Cow. Obviously it was written by Mark Miller and he had incredible art by J.G. Jones. And the concept is pretty simple. The main character is a guy named Wesley Gibson. He is um, an absolute, well, no, no, he just seems like he has a normal life, but they make him out to be an absolute loser. 
He works a dead-end job, his girlfriend's cheating on him with his best friend, and he's just kind of going nowhere. But then one day, his life basically gets turned upside down when he finds out his father was a big-time supervillain called The Killer, and he's recently been assassinated, and within The Killer's will, he wants Wesley to inherit all of his wealth and everything, etc., but first Wesley has to prove himself uh, as a supervillain himself, so he has to go through all this horrific training. And as he gets deeper into this secret society of supervillains, he discovers that, you know, the world once used to be full of superheroes, but the villains got together and basically wiped them out and wiped the general public's brains, and they basically just run the world in secret. And there's a lot more to it than that. I won't spoil it for you. I do recommend that you go read this one. It is a lot of fun. Uh, I was about 12 years old when this came out. I hadn't read Watchmen at the time. <laughs> so this was kind of my Watchmen. Uh, I'd never seen superheroes in this sort of uh, deconstructed, kind of uh, disgusting at times and cruel manner. And it was very grim and gritty. And it was just a lot of fun to me as a kid. And I reread it this week. And, you know, if it was to be published today, I don't know if it would fly. Uh, it's pretty mean-spirited in places, but it's also quite a lot of fun. Like a lot of Miller's comics, it's a big blockbuster-type story, very bombastic. J.G. Jones's art is incredible. If you hate Miller's writing, you should at least pick it up for the art. It's, it's fantastic. And obviously, if you're looking forward to Big Game this summer, this is where it all began. So definitely check this one out. Next up, we have the comic formerly known as Chosen now known as American Jesus Chosen. It was released in 2003, put out by Dark Horse. And it's very different to Wanted. It's actually from the original Miller World series that I've read this week, those first three. It kind of reads like a small, like quiet little indie film. It's about a kid who survives a horrible accident without a scratch on him, and then gradually realizes that he has powers that are very similar to uh, Jesus Christ. And he comes to believe that he is the second coming of Christ. And this causes all sorts of uh, trouble and discussion in his little town that he lives in. But then it also grows to uh, affect the rest of America and the world um, as the story goes on. It has great art by Peter Gross, who just has a very like sort of pared down like naturalistic style like he's really good at drawing most of the cast in this is high school kids he's really good at drawing kids and just normal things all the houses and and cars and dogs and and his wife colored it for him um in, in a beautiful watercolor style and it's just very toned down compared to something like wanted interestingly i found out that apparently mike waringo was meant to draw this before Peter Gross came on at the last minute. And uh, it's just bizarre. I can't imagine why uh, Mark Miller would think that Waringo's style would look good on a book of this kind of tone. I would definitely have loved to seen a comic with Miller and Waringo, but with different subject matter. But this was a short three-issue series, and it kind of ended on a cliffhanger. And I only recently found out that they've actually made two more series of this, which I'm really looking forward to digging into. So the last of the initial bunch of books released in 2003 that began Miller World was called The Unfunnies, with art by a fellow Welshman, Anthony Williams. And this book is really... I, I don't really know what to say about it. In an old interview, Miller describes it as being a very dark, multi-charactered story along the lines of Magnolia, but with funny animals drawn in a Hanna-Barbera sort of style. And I think somewhere else I heard him say that he decided to write something like this after he saw Happiness, uh, a film by Todd Salons. And in the past, I've thought about making a video on this comic because it's been stuck in my head for years. I was 12 years old when I bought it <laughs> and uh, Avatar Press were the only ones willing to publish it because of its um, transgressive content. And it, earlier in his career, Miller was very... Uh, transgressive I guess he was always pushing the envelope and you know of what could be written and published in a comic some of it being kind of edge lordy try hard disgustingness and violence and some of it just being a lot of fun uh, this book definitely falls into the former 
uh, I'm not even comfortable to talk about the story, so I, I would either just uh, look it up on Wikipedia, read about it there, or find the issues and read them. I did reread them recently, and there is n nothing really redeeming for this comic. And also, Miller himself seems to have kind of disowned it. It's not included in... Uh, I'm sure it's not going to be included in Big Game, which is coming up. And it's not included on the Miller World website or anything like that. I think it was just an experiment that he tried. And I don't think it really paid off in any meaningful way. So, <laughs> other than to teach him not to write books like this anymore. There was a fourth series that was meant to come out. I thought it was a one-shot, but I, I think maybe it was meant to be a mini-series of one-shots drawn by different artists. And the, the first issue was going to be drawn by Ashley Wood. The book was called Run. And it was going to be released through Image Comics. I read about it in Wizard Magazine when Miller World was first announced that there was going to be four series and I remember waiting and waiting for this one and it just never materialized. And it turns out it's because um, Miller and Ashley Wood were not uh, willing to sort of forego any upfront payment from Image Comics because you get all of the money on the back end when you're publishing through them. Uh, the solicitation for the issue says, uh, Live fast, die young, run is what happens when the wrong people start living life in the fast lane and a detailed exploration of the horror that ensues. Described as the fast and the furious on Mikey's, Run takes super speed to a level never seen in comic form before and shows what it means to really be the fastest man alive. And there's a content warning saying it's a superhero comic but it's definitely meant for people over the ages of 18. But yeah, this book just never came out. There was one sort of promo image and although I haven't read the Miller World book MPH, I'm wondering if maybe this series eventually did, you know, did come to have some of its ideas recycled and put into that book. So to wrap up, um, I would definitely read Wanted if you're looking forward to Big Game this summer. It's a really fun book on its own, but it definitely sets the stage for what will be coming from that series and also for uh, the Miller World universe in general. And although I'm curious to see if American Jesus does get folded into Big Game, I can't really see how it would, but that miniseries, that first one, is a genuinely very good comic. It looks good, it's, it's well written, and it's definitely worth your time. But that's it for, I guess, what I'm going to call Phase 1 of the Miller World Universe. Join me next week where I'll be looking at Kick-Ass, Nemesis, Superior, and a few others. And once more, if I can remind you to check out my comic, Gifford the Clown, link is in the description. Incredible artwork by Joe Beaman, non-stop action, I guarantee you won't be disappointed. <laughs>